Hey guys, it's Flidro, and this is a video on SimCraft. First, we start by downloading it. We go to SimCraft.org. There's a Downloads button at the top. Click that. On this page, you want to look for the Download button. If the patch listed is not the most recent one, go to the Nightly Builds and click the most recent 7-zip link. Download that and extract it to a folder somewhere on your computer. I choose my desktop. Once you have it extracted, go into the folder and find the SimCraft icon to run the executable. Double click on it and a Windows notification will pop up asking if you want to run it. Say yes, you trust this program. And then we are greeted with the splash screen for SimCraft. There's some things we need to do first before we start using the program. The first are the tabs at the top you need to be aware of. There's the import tab. This is where you can import your armory from the Battle.net website. Just select your realm and input your character name and it will generate a sim profile to run if you so choose. Another tab that is very important is the options tab. You'll see a variety of different options available, but we're only concerned with three. The threads drop down, the number of enemies drop down, and the iterations drop down. Now let's talk about those three options. The first thing we're going to talk about are threads. These are the number of CPU cores available on your computer. The higher the number, the more resources it will use. If you have it at the highest number available, it is going to have your CPU at 100% and you likely can't do much more on your system. If you are playing games or using your browser, I wouldn't have this at the max number. I use 6 out of 8. The next thing we really want to worry about are the iterations. This is how accurate your sims will be. For very rough and dirty sims, I will do a thousand. My typical sim case is running 10,000. And if I really want accurate results or I'm getting stat weights, I use 25,000. There's usually not much reason to go beyond 25,000. After that, we want to look at the number of enemies. This just determines how many enemies are present in the sim. Typically, I run sims of one target, three target, and eight target. This gives me a good idea of how gear, talents, or even weapon relics perform. It gives me a good idea of single target, cleave, and full AoE. After that, we have the simulate tab which is where we have our sim profiles, and then the results tab. Now let's go into the simulations tab and figure this out. The simulation tab is where you put in all the conditions for your simulation, gear, talents, and your rotation. For now, I'm only going to focus on talents and gear. For talents, we see on this line that there's a code. These numbers correspond to the talents in the row. The number in position 1 is row 1, position 2, row 2, and onwards. The number in this position corresponds to the selection in each row. Here's an example of a BM talent tree you might run on single target. 2, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2. And here's an example of a BM talent tree you might run on AOE. 3, 1, 1, 1, 1, 3, 2. This is important to know if you want to change your talents in the sim tab without having to re-import your profile. Next, we will cover gear and all the different little things you'll need to know about it. The easiest way to get a sum profile is to import your character from the armory using the import tab on Simulation Craft. Be warned that what is imported is dependent on what is in the armory, so you might need to log off to refresh the armory. Simply run the sim by clicking the simulate button at the bottom, and you can see the results in the results tab at the top of the window. If you want to find stat weights, we need to go in the options tab at the top and then go to the scaling tab after that. Check the box to enable scaling and select all the boxes you wish to scale. This should be your main stat, crit, haste, mastery, and versatility. After that, run your imported profile at a high number of iterations, usually 25,000 iterations at a minimum. Once you get your results, you'll see the stat weights in this box. 
as well as the pawn string you can import into the pawn add-on for at-a-glance upgrades on item tool tips. Additionally, you'll find a chart of your stat weights just a little bit lower down. Historically, SimCraft has had issues modeling haste, so take that with a grain of salt, just like all SimCraft results. What if you want to compare different gear sets? Sure, you could always use it with the armory import, but that's a bit tedious. <clears throat> this is where the Sim Permute add-on comes into play. Download and install the Sim Permute add-on. This is an add-on that will create permutations of gear you select from your bags. But first, let's change a few options and figure out how this add-on works. We type in slash sim permut to open the add-on window and find the drop-down in the top left and go to the options selection. Here we want to change the report type drop-down of gear to item names. Then we will do the same with the artifact and select relics taken. If you want to choose the default enchants and gems for your gear, this is where you can make these changes. Now let's go back to the drop down in the top left and go to gear permutation and select what we want to compare. Whenever you select checkbox on this window and hit generate at the bottom of the window, it will update the text box to the right of the add-on to give you a SimCraft profile you can run. For example, I want to see how these boots compare with the ones I just got. I'm only going to manipulate the checkboxes in the boots section. I select the other pair of boots I own and then hit generate. Once the text box updates, I will copy and paste this into the SimCraft profile, select the targets I want to sim, 1, 3, and 8 targets, and queue up the sim. Once I get the results, I know that the Star Stalker treads are better in every situation. You can do this with all the gear you own and want to sim, but be careful as the more checkboxes you select in each run, the longer the sim time will be. This is especially true for trinkets and rings, as there are many iterations and permutations available. But what if you want to sim and compare gear you don't already own? What you need to do is you need to find the item's ID. You can do this using add-ons that put item IDs in the tooltip, in-game, or you could use Wowhead like I do. Search the item on Wowhead and find the item ID in the URL of the Wowhead page. Once you have that, let's open up the base SimCraft profile imported and create some copies. If you've noticed before, whenever SimPermute creates its permutations, it had a notation that looks like this. Copy equals item name, comma, space. And then it replaced the slots using the notation of SimCraft. Feet equals comma item ID, then the item ID, bonus ID, and then the bonus ID, and maybe even some gems and enchants too. This is really simple to understand. Where it says feet equals comma, you would typically put in the name of the boots before this comma, but you don't need to do that if you provide the item ID. So you can always use the equals followed by a comma and then the item ID. But what about the bonus item ID? That seems like a headache, right? Well, because it is. But fortunately, we don't really need to worry about that. We can simply designate what item level we want the sim to run the item at using this notation. I levels equals and whatever the I level is. Here it is in practice. I'll create a 900 bloodthirsty instinct using bonus ID, and then I'll do the same using the I level notation. A note about this is when you are comparing something like trinkets against other trinkets, you typically want to remove the second trinket from the sim to avoid any issues. To do this when you're making your sim, make trinket 1 equal to whatever you want to sim and set trinket 2 equal to null. Remember, I want to know how this trinket stacks up against other trinkets, not how this trinket plus the second trinket stacks up against others. This just removes any complications. Now that we know how this works, we can create sims of different trinkets. For example, I want to know how all the TOS trinkets stack up against each other, and at what point do I want to start using them over what I have? In this situation, I might want to keep my second trinket equipped if I know I won't replace it. This is only really useful if the second trinket is something that won't be simmed. Like, for example, what if my sim created me wearing two BTIs? So I find the item IDs and create my copies, name the copies something relevant, and set everything up and see the results. 
And remember, you can do this with everything, not just trinkets. You can do it with pants, chest, tear tokens, anything. The last thing I want to talk about is comparing different relics. Again, we'll be using the sim permute add-on to create the permutations I want to sim. We open up the add-on window and go to the drop down in the top left again and go to the relic permutation selection. In this example, let's say I have a 915 arcane relic with a different trait. I need to compare this to what I have, which is a 910. So I select the arcane relic in the add-on window and find the trait of this new relic and change the item level in the text box below the relic dropdown and hit generate. Again, I will copy this and paste this into the SimCraft profile and run my sims to determine if this is an upgrade worth taking. You can use this to make more copies of different eye levels like we did with trinkets if you want to. Just add more things to the sim permute profile and you're good to go. With all that you've learned about this add-on, I'm sure you'll be able to figure out the talent permutations, so I'll leave that up to you guys. In the end, don't be afraid to experiment with sims. Don't be afraid to change your profile names to something that you can interpret on your own in order to create a shorthand. Here's an example of what happens if you leave everything on default. It can be a nightmare to interpret at a glance, so it can be up to you to, to determine your own system.